quick question. Who's going to tell these people that black men actually like black women a lot? The people that I know, my homegirls, family members, black men like black women. Like, I don't know where y'all are hearing that they don't. Um, they do. Um, there's a lot of people with black men. I love black men and I have a black man, okay? And my black man loves me. But we're not going to get on that topic. But black men love black women. Now, there's some who don't, okay? But I genuinely think many black men really love their women. I do. Unless they get traumatized or something or something happens or maybe they just want to go on the other side. I don't know. But black men really do like black women. Like, why are people thinking that they don't? That's scary. Just like YT men like their women too. Black men love their women. When their women walking down the street, that's the first thing most of them are looking at is another black woman. They're not really, like when, when they are walking, their eye is catched to a black woman if they are a black man most of the time. Now, like I said, there are some people who like to venture out and that's okay. But whoever is telling people that black men don't like black women, that is a scam and you're being scammed. Just like, just like my nail falling off, you're being scammed. Like, yeah, yeah, genuinely, like, that's weird. They're out here liking their own kind. I'm Cubanita and Italiana. Yeah. I like black women, like, you know. Um, we are there's black, nothing, but that's Yes, okay. no problem. I mean, like, <laughs> She's black. No, 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 of course they're all black. You know, I'm from New York. All Spanish, everything is black, but, no, you know, like, just... Black. Y'all notice how she said, it sounded like she said Cubana, Italiana, like what she was saying, who she was, or like where she was from. But then as soon as he said, I like black women, all of a sudden she cold switched. This is exactly what has been happening, ladies and gentlemen. People are black, morena, when it's convenient. Now, if this man would have said, no, my preference is Latinas, I love a spicy caliente Latina. Yeah, you know I'm from New York, Dykeman in the building. I love it. I love it. Then she would have been, oh, yes, oh, yes, papi, papi tulo, yes, papi, oh, yeah. But conveniently now she, oh, that's black too. Like, since when? That's not what you said initially, sis. Stand on it. And for the host to be like, oh, she's black. Ma'am, like, y'all need to stop that. Everybody, the one drop rule is played out. It's 2024. Let these people identify what they truly identify as and not allow them to cosplay as black when it's convenient. Spread love is a Brooklyn way. What y'all think about this? And shouts out to him. He was fine, too. Mm. Let's get something clear real quick. If you have a problem or if you find it corny that I uplift, compliment, show love, encourage black women, fuck you. If you have a problem with me doing the same for my brothers, black men, fuck you. I'm not on here for clout. I don't give a fuck about nobody's validation. I don't give a fuck about nobody agreeing or disagreeing with me. I'm on here because I understand that you all, we all are being poisoned in the mind and in our hearts. We all are being conditioned and brainwashed to hate each other. And I'm not fucking going for it. I'm not going for it. I'm a black man. I don't fucking follow rules. I don't follow trends. I set trends. And you motherfuckers sit up here and then settled and, and, and became content with being followers and slaves, and I ain't with that bullshit. If it's more comfortable for you to hear a brother diss other brothers, then go somewhere else. Take your ass somewhere else. It's a billion different other platforms and channels spread negativity and division within this community. I ain't one of them. You can kiss my ass. Don't get it twisted and take my kindness for weakness Cause I'm one of them motherfuckers that come out the trenches that did everything that you motherfuckers consistently lie about. And it shows on your motherfucking faces. It shows in your energy. Motherfucker, I smell bitch on a lot of you motherfuckers. I just stay to myself and mind my business. I just do my thing and stay in my lane. But don't get shit fucked up. Ain't it crazy how when I was a teenager, a child, getting guns put in my hands by punk motherfuckers that didn't have the balls to go and put in their own work and sent a child to do it for them. When I was doing that, I was cool as hell. I was the best nigga living. I was the gangstest motherfucker living. But when I'm trying to be positive, when I'm trying to spread unity, when I'm trying to stop the division, when I'm trying to wake my people up, now all of a sudden it's corny. 
Now all of a sudden, oh, bro, that's weak, bro. That's lame, bro. No, nah, your mama lame, bitch. But when did straight hair become associated with a white woman look? Not necessarily a white woman, but other races like Indians, you know, just um, people who naturally grow straight. Black women don't grow straight hair. That's true. If we all lived in a society where it was just black people, do you think women will be straightening their hair? I think you just answered your mm. question. The reason why women wear straight wigs is because in order to get our hair straight, we have to put heat on our hair, which damages our actual afro. So I think wearing wigs is just a protective style so mm. that we don't have to damage what's actually under our wig. See, that would make sense if there was somebody forcing you to uh, have your hair straight. But nobody's forcing you to do a straight hairstyle, right, so, so why do you, you have to do that? To, you wanting to wear a protective style is a choice. Right. Yeah, nobody's forcing us to do it. It's a way of protecting our own hair. The wig is not protective, though. The protective thing is those cornrows under the wig. The wig is just a cover-up hairstyle because you don't want people to see your jail braids, as they call them. The truth is, if Janet Jackson doesn't think that Kamala Harris is black, then that's her opinion and her constitutional right. I said that Kamala Harris is just trying to get votes. So D.L. Hughley and used to be fans of Janet Jackson, y'all can go to hell. So Janet really wasn't wrong for not fucking with Kamala. She really not wrong. And cases is this like your this girl? Can depend on the testimony is this your girl fucking with her brother? User. In general, uh, the child will be able to recall and recollect with some detail the incident, and that is persuasive to a jury, even if it is the only testimony that is available. Jackson gave a wave when he was released after booking. He's scheduled for arraignment in January. Michael's been a longtime resident of Trump Tower, and last night the Donald strongly reiterated his defense of Jackson with Larry King oh, by going after so it's the all accuser's to make mother. Sense. She's had plenty of experience at going after people. And she goes after them viciously and violently. And I saw a story and I read another story about some of the things she's done. And I don't believe it. But you know what it's like when an indictment comes down. It's tough. It's presumption. He's t it's tough. It's tough to win. But I have a feeling he's going to win, Larry. The interesting thing is I've known Michael from many different standpoints and Michael would spend a lot of time with my kids. I have beautiful kids and at the time, like at Mar-a-Lago and even in Trump Tower, the kids were very young. Michael would come, play with the kids. He just loved children. He was not a child molester. So the fact that she don't really fuck with her makes sense now. It makes sense. She don't fuck with her because she loyal to her brother, loyal to the soil. At the end of the day, we can say Michael was a white man or he changed his skin, bleached his skin. We can laugh at the Jackson's noses. We can laugh and say that they, you know, disowned the black side and they all procreated with somebody outside of, you know, they, they blackness. But at the end of the day, that's still her brother. She don't fuck with your girl. That's just what it is. And truthfully, I can't even say I blame her. Because I would do the same thing. Like, the, at the end of the day, my brother gone. But, bitch, I don't fuck with you. It's simple. Vote for whoever it is you want to vote for. You can vote for your boy Trump or you can vote for your girl Kamala. But at the end of the day, now I understand why Janet felt how she felt. And she threw a whole tree at that bitch at the end of the day. As she should. Because regardless of what y'all want to say, that was still her brother. And they still did him dirty as hell before he left this earth. And they still didn't find no proof that he had ever touched any child. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Y'all good. And Janet good. Because I would have said more than that. I would have cursed that Let me stop. The only thing that Janet Jackson is standing on today, bro, is straight business, bro. I cannot believe it. So after that whole Janet Jackson saying that Kamala Harris isn't black thing, I guess her team sent out an apology. Her team said to BuzzFeed that her comments were based on misinformation and she deeply respects Vice President Kamala Harris and her accomplishments as a black and Indian woman. Well, turns out this was complete cap. This was not from her team. This is from somebody else apparently. So Janet Jackson's apology for ill-informed comments about Kamala Harris was not authorized, bro. <laughs> she doubled down and told y'all, yo, I meant every word I said. So that quote unquote apology that uh, Janet Jackson or her team released was not authorized, not one bit. And she meant what she said 100%. Mm. Now with the amount of backlash she is facing, 
Will she apologize? Who knows? Will she stand on business of what she said? Who knows? Anyways, what is your thoughts and opinions about this whole thing? Um, I don't know why this race thing is coming up again, but hey, that's 2024 for you, right? I'm with Janet, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. And she's being attacked by Black Simpleton simply because of what she said she heard about y'all curry queen. Janet saying she heard that Kamala Harris is not black is not new news to black people. This is this conversation is happening in so many black households in this country right now. Cut it. And here y'all go acting like typical Democrats, a.k.a. the white knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Attacking a black woman because she had the courage to say the quiet part out loud. A foundational black American, an American descendant of slaves. A black artist who brought many other artists out of poverty by giving them employment opportunities. And Kamala's father being from Jamaica does not mean he's black. And confirms that Kamala Harris is not a foundational black American. And for the simpletons, oh, she went to Howard. Oh, she said she was black in her book. You know who also went to Howard? And then there was some rep who released an apology saying it was from Janet, but it wasn't. Thank God. You can't cancel Janet. She's been an entertainer and an icon for over 50 years. And God willing, she'll be here for 50 more. Aren't y'all tired of cutting off your own noses to spite your faces? Hopefully one day you'll realize that this mob style of attacking black people you don't agree with is right out of the white Southern Dixiecrats playbook. And hopefully that will lead to the truth why so many black folks actually became Democrats. Oh. D.L. Hughley disrespects Janet Jackson, an actual black woman, right? Whatever happened to black men protecting black women, I guess that shit went out the goddamn window. But he's been talking real bad about black women for years now. This is the same man who went on to a live radio station and talked about how his daughter was violated by one of his friends and he didn't do anything and didn't believe her because he liked the guy. Always And, and the reason it hits home to me is because my youngest daughter said something happened to her and because it was somebody I liked, I didn't believe her. Mm. And I, I'll never get that back. She'll mm -hmm. never, I'm supposed to protect her and I'll never get that back that she got, she told her father something and he didn't do nothing about it mm -hmm. because it was inconvenient. So I, I can see how that could So he takes to his Twitter to say, all I know is Kamala looks like she did when she was in Oakland, but Janet don't look like she did when she was Penny. What the hell is in the iron? Kamala looks the way she does because she has a mom from India and a dad from Jamaica. Janet Jackson looks the way she does because she had plastic surgery. This is what he's saying. Now, mind you, Janet Jackson is a descendant of American chattel slavery, okay? So many reports have come out about Kamala Harris's father, Jamaican. He actually, his family owned slaves, okay? We have here a black woman who has broke barriers for other black people, including her brother, Michael, for black people in the music industry. And she's being disrespected by D.L. Hughley, a black man, for a woman whose family owned slaves in Jamaica. It's quite interesting, I think. And I love that Janet Jackson fired that PR person who came out and said that she apologized because she said, bitch, I said what I said. Matter of fact, this will be your last day. The multitude of comments that I see about Biden and Harris not having any power to stop the execution of Marcellus Williams is really infuriating. And it's even more wild to me that regular, everyday people have done every possible thing that they can because they recognize what is happening to Marcellus Khalifa Williams is wrong and that this innocent man does not deserve to die. So much so that regular everyday people have been out in the streets, have been petitioning, sending emails, calling, leaving voicemail. They're not the governor. They're not the Supreme Court. They don't make any decisions but they know that this shit is wrong. And so they have used every bit of their energy, every bit of their voices, every bit as a platform to say that this shit is wrong. And you all are telling me that the president of the United States, that the vice president of the United States can't even say that this shit is wrong because they don't have the power to change an innocent man being executed by the state. So if you honestly believe that the president and the vice president of this country don't have a duty as public servants to stand up when something like this is happening and everyone knows that it's wrong, you don't have to wait until November. You don't have to wait until Project 2025. You are living 
and accepting all of the things that you claim that you fear right now. This one right here about to piss a lot of people off. And truth be told, I don't give a fuck. I have a platform and I'm gonna use my fucking voice. I know we're supposed to keep our algorithm clean for whatever we're doing, but fuck that. He's either gonna piss you off or you're gonna come on over and join the team, okay? First of all, you mean to fucking tell me the one thing that America give a fuck about right now is how many bottles of baby oil a motherfucker has. We been knowing that this motherfucker been fucked up. But oh, back in the gap, we some 10-4 hair, 10-4 hat wearing ass motherfuckers when we trying to tell y'all about some shit that's going down that's literally disgusting. But we were crazy, okay? But this is why I don't fuck with neither one of them that's in office that y'all hold so dear to y'all hearts. Both of them, La Mala Mala and La Maga Maga, make shit great again. Ain't shit great about none of this shit that's going on. So both of them don't fuck with you, your children, your well-being, or anything. Because when shit like this hit the fan that's real, where the fuck are they? They only want your vote. They only up there to appease you so they can look like you so that you can get, give them their vote and still not give a fuck about you. I'm dead ass. Like, this is why I don't care for neither one of them. This is why I don't waste my time or my energy voting for neither one of them. None of them. Because at the end of the day, y'all, they don't care. The only thing they care about is your energy. <laughs> and if you think it's good energy, you got another thing fucking coming. Anything they're doing is not for you. It's solely for them. Their whole agenda. This right here should show you. This right here, Marcella, Marcellus Williams should show you right the fuck now the power that they don't use that they have because they don't really give a fuck. They want to stir up the, the, you know, confusion. All this that's going on in the media about somebody that we already knew was fucked up, but ain't none of them talking about this man that's about to lose his life over, over some shit he didn't even do. Y'all got DNA evidence that he did not fucking do it. Multiple times, y'all have denied his right to stay a fucking life. Like, this is the shit right here why I don't fuck with neither one of them that's in office. I hope y'all wake up and open y'all fucking eyes. They're not out here for you. Stop bickering amongst each other and causing divide between us over two people who don't fucking like you, don't know you, or don't give a fuck about your struggles. But you going hard for them on this app. You going hard for them in the comment section. Neither one of them. Neither one of them. And none of the ones in the past either. Your favorite ones that y'all hold here, baby, there's an agenda so bigger than you that will blow your fucking mind. They don't care about you. The only thing they want from you is that energy. And I promise you, it's not good energy. It's not. It's the lower you are, <clears throat> the better dinner for them. Okay? Your low vibrations and your inner, your low energy is lobster for them. So please, wake the fuck up, people. Wake the fuck up. They don't care about you. They don't care about you, your well-being, or nothing. This man should not die today because of some bullshit that y'all don't want to get together or some political bullshit. I don't even know. But the fact that his life is on the line for some shit he did not fucking do, I'm beyond this fucking country, yo. I'm beyond this fucking country. Wake the fuck up. Wasn't it recently we heard that the government is trying to pass a new law to make it so that even if you're innocent, you can't appeal your sentencing? And black people were all over social media saying we know they're doing this because they're also trying to bring back, back slavery. And we know this is going to mainly affect black people because if you're not used to them, if you're not useful to them, if they can't use you as a slave. They want you dead. And aren't they now showing us with Marcellus Williams? There's no longer a north to escape to for freedom. And it don't feel like there ever really was. At 6 p.m. Central Time today, black people have to face a very ugly, but equally very old truth. And I believe that truth is black faces in high places will not save us. While we all call out the governor of Missouri, which we should, let it not go unnoticed that the entire Supreme Court of Missouri came to unanimous decision that the evidence presented was insufficient. There's a black woman on that Supreme Court. Our brother Marcellus Imam Khalifa Williams is one of who knows how many to be put to death in order to ensure that the rest of us don't forget our place in their world. It's not a coincidence that a black man's execution is basically being broadcasted live for the world to see, just so we know there's nothing we can do about it. While we are on the precipice of our first black woman president, and all the while, a black woman is the one to help deny him his clemency. What that does to the psyche of a people is beyond cruel. And while the situation for black people around the globe is dire, and it's easy to slip into pessimism.
like my great grandma used to say, where there's life, there's hope. Please keep calling, keep fighting, keep reading. If for no one else, then for Marcella C. Mom Khalifa Williams. Originally in the Constitution, I'm three fifths of a person, and I don't have a right to make. And in 2024, you standing your ass up there as a fucking millionaire. Please stop this fucking victim shit. This witch went back to the beginning of the Constitution to prove a damn point. New findings from the monthly abortion provision study shows that an estimated 1 million abortions occurred in a formal health care system in 2023. Now, who the hell is stopping you from having abortions? They, they crying like this. The number for gun deaths is literally not even the motherfucking 37,000 out of this. In the entire United States. But they gonna have you believe that you can't do this. That this is the reason you need to vote. That this is the reason democracy is on the line. A million babies was aborted last year. We had 800,000 as, as, as of right now. Ain't nobody stopping you. They got a damn van right outside the DNC. And they cry to you that you can't do it. This is the most unhinged shit I ever seen in my life. It's like a fucking movie. I need this message to go out to our vice president, who's running for president. I have heard all over social media about, excuse me if I say anything wrong, immigrants getting um, loans, money. It was hard for me to believe. It was just extremely hard for me to believe. I've been in business such a long time. Back in 2019, I purchased my first food truck. It cost me over $25,000. I paid it cash money. I worked hard to pay for this truck. I'm now selling it because I'm just going to, I'm doing other things, but I'm selling it. I had a guy come to look at purchasing my vehicle of my food truck and he explained to me he's an illegal immigrant he has no credit he has no money in the bank but he showed me his paperwork that he will receive funds to purchase my food truck I'm thankful that he's buying it but I'm hurt that I work so hard to pay cash for my food truck. I have good credit. Can't even get a business loan because of the color of my skin. I have veterans in my family. I'm a veteran. I've been self-employed for so long. But somebody, please tell me, how do I work so hard to have somebody who comes to this country not long, no credit. And he shows me paperwork where they'll be funding him money to buy my food truck. And when I talked to the bank, they told me um, usually they have to go straight to a dealership because you know, I'm, a, I'm a private sale. But for special circumstances, they're going to, you know, they allow it. But I need my president to tell me why I worked so hard all these years, all these decades. Couldn't get a business loan, but I bust my ass to get the money to create my business. And we got immigrants coming here. And they're getting money. Money! <laughs> We're doing nothing but just being here. It's not right, and I want answers. 
Now, family, uh, this special Negro, in this next clip, I want to know, do I need to take some time and fully cook him in a separate video? Let me know. Because you, you can look and tell he one of these, as Jason Black would say, old niggas. So do I need to take a, a, a whole segment out to just cook him? Or just let this play so we can see how ignorant some of these shields are. So I see this video and people are using it as a reason not to vote for Kamala Harris, I guess. But there are some discrepancies about this video made by this person. A lot of red flags, a lot of alarms are going off, antennas are going up. I understand there's a lot of people that don't know bullshit when they smell it. Let me help you out. The first thing she says is she was selling her food truck. And an illegal immigrant offered to buy it, purchase it, by means of documentation that, that the government allowed him to have funds to pay for it. An illegal alien went to the government and didn't get arrested. Didn't get deported. And then there's the fact that illegal undocumented migrants do not get any type of... Uh, um, assistance from government whatsoever they can't even get food stamps the only thing they can get is a, what keeps them alive while they're here until they get deported which is emergency medical care health care dental shelter and food three square meals a day they get the same exact treatment as prisoners in prison nothing more not to mention the amount of certifications, license, and permits you have to have to operate a food truck in the United States. Yet an illegal migrant can just walk up and buy one and operate it freely. Bullshit. And for all you people that shared her video and have it post on your page and you use the narrative, sometimes you use the narrative for political reasons, other times you use it for how hard it is for black owned businesses to make it using her video saying that we are discriminated against you know by the banks because she said she could not get a bank loan a small business loan from banks because of the color of her skin that's interesting because if she was not accepted or not given a not did not qualify for a bank loan because of the color of her skin well there's federal laws against that the equal credit opportunity act that's one of them not to mention the Biden administration as well as the Obama administration has made it easier for black owned businesses, small businesses. In fact, so easy that under the Biden administration, small African-American businesses have quadrupled in success. So when she says she's not getting bank loans, small business loans because she's African-American, maybe it's because she didn't meet all the requirements. There are a lot of there's a lot into when you apply for a small business loan from banks. There are a lot of things, the reason, a lot of reasons why you may not qualify or be accepted for one. Especially this one right here. Debt service recovery ratio. And what this is, they compare a business's cash flow to the debt. Meaning if your business isn't doing well or hasn't been doing well, you're not probably not going to qualify. And there's a whole list of things you have to provide that have to look good. Oops. So when she says she has very good credit and still got denied, well, and because it was of the color of her skin, well, that's interesting because uh, because if that's the case, then this would be a class action lawsuit stream, wouldn't it? Hell, deny me for something because of my color of my skin. Cha-ching! Know how to smell shit when you step in it. And as for this comment where you say Kamala hold her way into politics, that's another interesting thing. Because Kamala Harris was a prosecutor after law school. Then she was district attorney, which she was elected. Then she was elected as a Senate. Then vice president. So what exactly, who does she, she exactly sleep with? The entire U.S. that voted for her? I smell, I smell bullshit. 
You know, I find it weird when black women get in my comment section and y'all say, well, we've been leading the household for so long. The men have left us to pray and they have just forced us to be the, um, the leaders of the household. Yes, you have been a leader, but has it been productive? That is the issue that a lot of black women seem to forget. Just because you can lead a family does not mean that you are leading them to productivity because the outcome of your adult children will show your lack of leadership. The black community has not grown or developed because black women have not led it anywhere but to an emotional state, which means is that now men want to be emotional and now they're depending on the system to support them when it is our job to support ourselves. But an emotional black woman is never going to be able to see that because you need focus, you need logic, and you need very much discipline, which <laughs> that does not come from a black woman, clearly. Because if it did, we would be much further because the black woman has been leading the household for how long? I will wait. Um, black men around the country, this ain't no post bashing. Um, you're nothing like that. I ain't even on that kind of time. But I seen this clip the other day when Kamala sat down with NABJ. Hope I got them letters right. Um, and she said something. I had somebody find me this clip. I just want to play it real quick. It's very important to not um, operate from the assumption that black men are in anybody's pocket. Black men are like any other voting group. You got to earn their vote. So I'm working to earn the vote, not assuming I'm going to have it because I am black, but because the policies and the perspectives I have understands what we must do to recognize the needs of all communities and I, I i i just thought when i when i heard that answer i said damn she didn't dive in and say hey i was part of a presidency that we produced the lowest black unemployment rate or we did something that no other presidents that you have ever done for the HBCU community. Ah. She didn't say none of that. She specifically said, specifically. when it comes to the black male vote, I gotta earn it. I gotta earn I don't want y'all to give me nothing. I got to earn y'all vote. And it took, it made me think about it. I said, man, when was the last time you even heard 45 say anything about black anything black men black women <laughs> black anything besides trying to get everybody to hate the black Haitians and it made me say what I'm about to say now man regardless of what y'all do black men on November the 5th all I'm saying to you is do something, something. whatever you do do something do something this is a lesson on how white people mark you. There's a truck above the middle. He's facing right. He's in a, uh, he's parked at the gas pump over here. I can't zoom in, but I want to show y'all this. I'm walking like a sucker, walking like a sucker. I stop for a second. I make eye contact. He say, what's up? But I was feeling funny about that shit, right? So... What we got going on now they always need to know what vehicle you are going to ladies pay attention and younger men look at me coming out looking like a sucker looking like a sucker as soon as i get to my truck boom he pulls out he has me marked he knows what vehicle to tell the rest of his cronies if they feeling froggy let's be clear Let's be very clear. I am running for president to help the illegal immigrants because we have more in common than what separates us and what separates us is the unburden of what has been and what has not. The three million homes that I plan on building are for the illegal immigrants because they need help the most. And also, I have no policy in place no foreign policy for the war in Ukraine and the war in Gaza. And let's be clear. Let's be very clear. I meant what I said, that I'm not going to do anything specifically for black people, including reparations. So we need to move forward.
to destruction and crime because we love crime and we love chaos. Just look at all the major cities that are ran by my party. Homelessness is on the rise and unemployment is on the rise too, but don't worry. The American dream is for the immigrants. And we support illegal immigration to the T and we will keep that border open. Yes, we will, but you need to vote for me, Kamala. I am the new way. Please vote. I will never get over the fact that Biden got on The Breakfast Club and said, and if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Hit the button. Yeah. Because that's how low they think of us. We don't need to give you policies. Yeah. We don't need to give you plans. You just need to know that I'm not as racist as this guy, and that's all you're going to get. It's like, not by me, pal. So I am self-taught, okay? But I learned... Um, and I took notes from two influencers on TikTok. One goes by the name of Nakia, all right? And the other goes by I'm a Vibe, okay? They speak two different forms of Tutnees. One, Nakia, she speaks traditional Tutnees. She's a legacy speaker, that means it's been in her family. Oh, Nani. Mama na you tati. So so mommy, papi o paproli. So say yak. I tell a little kek to to for face to I instantly understood Nakia, so I was sticking with her for a minute, learning from her. And then later on, I came across Tut New, and I heard uh, I'm a vibe. Ah, so so ya ko use this papi a kek. Okay, so so. Tati la mommy wakashira. The, the swagger and how she was speaking the words was like very beautiful to me. So basically I took the swagger of um, how she spoke and I infused it with the traditional Tutnese and that's how you get my cadence and how I speak Tutnese is basically a byproduct of those two women because I was influenced by them. All right? Papiakati, babiaki.